and we begin with breaking news on the Israel-Hamas war and a ruling just out from the International Court of Justice in The Hague. Now, the judges at the ICJ have reaffirmed earlier orders in a case brought by South Africa, and today they have ordered Israel to halt its offensive in Rafah. Israel has also been ordered to reopen the Rafah border crossing to give investigators access and to allow for the flow of aid and humanitarian measures. Israel must immediately halt its military offensive and any other action in the Rafah governorate which may inflict on the Palestinian group in Gaza conditions of life that could bring about its physical destruction in whole or in part. Reporter Alex Caddy is just outside the court in The Hague where that ruling just came down a few moments ago. Alex, what more can you tell us about the ruling and its potential impact? Well, certainly this ruling we expected was going to send a very clear message, and it has done that. The court ordering Israel to cease all military operations in Rafah, also explaining some of the logic behind that decision. They say the humanitarian situation in Rafah can be seen as uh, disastrous, and they are not convinced that Israel has put enough in place uh, to uh, cater to that humanitarian disaster or to allow for the safe evacuation of civilians. So uh, twofold measures there. One, the stopping of all military operations in Rafah and to allow for the access to United Nations fact-finding missions in Rafah as well. So clearly a message from the World Court that Israel has to do more, must do more, and that things have not improved since it last ordered Israel to do so. Now, the big question about the consequences is a little bit more complicated because although these are legally binding orders, they are not legally enforceable. The International Court of Justice in the Peace Palace behind me does not have a police force to enforce these orders. What they can do, or what the UN can do, is have the UN Security Council pass resolutions to sanction Israel, to have weapons embargoes against Israel, and have enforcement action for these orders. But those can be vetoed by the United States. So, crucially, the relationship between Israel and Washington, D.C. is now crucial going forward. And, you know, as you're speaking, Alex, there's already a wire out. Allegedly, Hamas has issued a statement saying that they're urging the U.N. Security Council, as you mentioned, to implement the ICJ ruling. So let's move away from the ICJ for a moment and turn to the ICC, where the lead prosecutor is seeking those arrest warrants for the Israeli prime minister, other top Israeli officials, as well as members of the Hamas leadership. Let's talk about the increasing international pressure, presumably even where you are. We can hear people screaming and that pressure on Israel. Well, there's certainly diplomatic pressure. We've seen European Union nations, Spain, Ireland, uh, uh, Norway, uh, saying that in a matter of days they will recognize Palestinian statehood. We can expect Slovenia, Belgium, others to follow suit. Crucially, though, Germany, France saying the conditions have not been met to recognize Palestine as a state. That remains a big issue. The International Criminal Court, as you quite rightly say, issuing those arrests or requesting, I should say, those arrest warrants. That decision will be made in a couple of months. That would mean that uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu, Defence Minister Gallant, would not be able to travel to around 124 countries around the world, including uh, Canada, including most of the European Union states as well, for fear of being arrested. Now, also the leadership of Hamas, those uh, uh, leaders of Hamas who organized the atrocities of October 7th as well, subject to those arrest warrants. But you're right to say that there is a building diplomatic pressure uh, perhaps one difference is that the new Dutch government, led by Heert Wilders, which will be formed in the next few days, on which a deal has been reached, is more supportive of Israel than the previous one. So, broadly speaking, across Europe, more pressure on Israel to do more, but there are some exceptions. Alex Kadia at The Hague, thank you so much.